I almost said good morning. <laughs> Merry Christmas to you. Uh, so glad you're here. Uh, for those of you who are here instead of home watching the game, thank you for making the ultimate sacrifice. I'm also aware that some of you are actually watching the game right now. <laughs> if you stand up with both hands in the air and shout, I will just assume that I'm doing really good preaching. <laughs> so, so how's that? Uh, Luke chapter 2 says, uh, Joseph went up from the town of Nazareth to Galilee, to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. And he went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. For generations, uh, people had waited for the Messiah to come, and they had a, a set of expectations that went along with how he would get there and what he would do. At this time, Israel was under Roman occupation. Uh, soldiers from a military that was another country walked up and down their streets to keep order. Their taxes had to go to support a country that they didn't believe in their values. They didn't want them to be there, and yet they had no choice. And so they had a lot of expectations about what the Messiah would look like when he came and what he would do when he got here. But here's, here's what I want you to see. Jesus came as promised, but not as expected. Jesus came as promised, but not as expected. Now, anticipation is an important part of our faith. In fact, if you believe that God is, that God is near us, that God is with us, that God is for us, that's, well, the book of Hebrews actually tells us that's what faith is. In fact, anybody who trusts that those things are true, what they'll notice is that their anticipation in life for good things, for better things, actually begins to grow. This is what it said. God gave clues along the way of the fact that Jesus was going to come. An ancient prophecy by one of the major prophets, Isaiah, said this. He said, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. A lesser known prophet by the name of Micah said this, but you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. There's a lot to anticipate about the Messiah coming, but there were also a lot of expectations. And this, for the, the, the purpose of our talk tonight, I'd like us to think that anticipation and expectation are two different things. When we anticipate things from God, we believe God is going to do something good. When we have expectations, sometimes we think we know what God is going to do and how he's going to do it and when he's going to do it. And I've discovered that my ability to predict and forecast those kinds of specific things is not all that good. God does good things, but often at times and in ways I could not have imagined. And the thing is, is that they had expectations about how the Messiah would come. They thought he would be born into a royal home, that he would be raised in a palace, that he would have access to military armies, that he would be well-networked, well-resourced. Instead, Jesus comes born in an out-of-the-way place that nobody wanted to go to. It was, it was to an impoverished family. I mean, he didn't meet any of their expectations, but the failed expectations of people did not keep Jesus from coming. And our expectations of God, when they are failed, doesn't keep him from coming into our lives either. So how can we build kind of a, a healthy anticipation without creating expectations of God? And I think there's three habits or three practices that might help you. And the first is this, just ask often, ask often. Anybody with kids? Christmas is almost here. Have they been asking? Anybody's spouse been asking? <laughs> we just kind of, 
at least we'll put hints out there. We hope they pick them up. God sent his son into a dark and a broken world on a rescue mission. And he's engaged in the, in the work of redemption, which happens to be quite expensive and very exhausting. It's hard work. And we're also called to participate in the work of redemption, so we shouldn't be surprised that things are difficult and they're hard and they're exhausting and sometimes expensive for us as well. What we need to know is that the way the resources of heaven are released into our world is by asking. We ask and we keep on asking. Ask, ask largely, ask boldly, ask frequently. God is not offended by our request. He doesn't always do what we want, when we want, how we want, where we want, but that doesn't mean that he is not for us, he is not with us, and he's not doing good things in our lives. So we kind of have this expect expectation. This is how God will do it. Let's change it to an anticipation. I wonder what God will do when I invite him into this. That would be good. No. We can learn to anticipate without imposing either a pace or a process. You know, this is the time frame I need it. Followers of Christ will wind up logging time in Bethlehem. You know, Mary and Joseph went there and, and there was no room. There were no reservations. There was nothing waiting there for them. And it'd be very easy for them to think, we're not supposed to be here. But God was very much at work. So ask. Ask frequently. Ask often. Uh, second habit, second practice, it might have, search carefully. Search carefully. Uh, some people don't experience the will of God uh, not because they rejected it, but because they don't recognize it when it actually comes. You see, stars don't always guide the way to where we're supposed to be, and angels don't always sing when we get close. It's nice when that happens, but that's not how it works most of the time. God insists on using ordinary things in our lives to do extraordinary things in our lives. It's well documented in Scripture that he takes ordinary people and does extraordinary things with them. Giants are slain in Scripture not by someone pulling a magic sword out of a stone, but a very common sling and a stone. And lepers are cured not by having some kind of, of a theatric magic show, but by someone just taking a bath in ordinary water. We have to learn that miracles are actually made of ordinary things that are placed in the hands of God. That's what makes the difference. So don't take away the raw material that God uses for miracles. We're not going to drift towards spiritual life. We have to be kind of intentional about this. And maybe God will use your challenging work environment to do a miracle of creating patience inside of you. What if he did that? What if he took a stressed relationship and worked a miracle of deep and abiding love inside of you? What if you took an unsettled and chaotic situation and worked a miracle to bring peace to you? What if, what if he used the frustrating personalities in your life to actually do a miracle of showing us how to be kind to people, not because they deserve it, but because we're capable of it? What if God used monotony to teach us faithfulness? None of these are extraordinary things, but it's amazing what God can do when we put these ordinary things into his hands. The miracles of God are not always apparent and the classrooms of God are not always obvious, but we can learn to look for clues. Be on the lookout. So one of the gifts God gives us, ask. Go ahead and ask. Another gift he gives us, be on the alert. Be on the lookout. There's clues all around us as to what God is doing. And then the third practice, the third habit is to knock continually. I wish I could tell you that all the doors in life just automatically open for us like we do when we go to the supermarket, but how many have discovered that's not how life works very much? Uh, something happens in our lives and in our hearts when we learn to knock on doors. That's an important thing. It's, it's a way to think about life. You know, 
I was raised with uh, this phrase. I don't know if anybody else has heard it, but uh, opportunity knocks. And the truth is, opportunity doesn't knock. Sometimes it answers when we knock. We're the ones that are supposed to be knocking. An unending series of open doors would certainly make our lives a whole lot easier, but we live in a world that has a vested interest in keeping a lot of doors closed. People feel safer when doors are closed, and sometimes they feel better about themselves or maybe even better than others when they close doors. We can close doors and keep certain people out. And so there's always a series of closed doors that we're going to have to face in our lives. And, and one of the gifts that we have that God gives us is, is when we see a closed door, not to just assume, not to just expect. There's nothing on the other side of that door that's for me. It's closed for a reason. I have no options to exercise here. And what God says, go ahead and knock on that door and see what happens. If we're ruled by our expectations, we will not knock on the doors. We will just suspect that it's closed for a reason and there's nothing on the other side that's for us. But we could ask, and we could ask often, and we could wonder what God will do in answer to our prayers. We could seek and search carefully and diligently and wonder what God is doing around us. We could knock on doors and wonder what is on the other side. This is what Jesus tells us to do in Luke chapter 11. I say to you, ask and it will be given. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened. For everyone who asks receives and he who seeks finds and to him who knocks, the door will be opened. I wonder what God will do when we ask, when we seek and when we knock. Wonder is a wonderful way to live. And it's the gift that God offers us. The Christmas story reminds us that God is real. I'll have the worship team come out. Reminds us that God is real. Reminds us that he is with us. It reminds us that he is for us. It reminds us that supernatural things can happen in natural places. It may require some long and uncomfortable journeys from places like Nazareth to Bethlehem. There may be times when the resources of heaven are not automatic and they're not obvious, but that does not intimidate those who follow the Son of God. He is found in such places and he does some of his very best work in those places. So this year, maybe the gifts God is giving you is to ask to seek and to knock. It's a wonderful way to live. Would you bow your head with me? But Father, we make a choice tonight to receive those gifts. And we acknowledge sometimes we have a set of expectations and we think that you ought to do certain things in certain ways. Would you help us be willing to set aside expectations and exchange it for anticipation tonight as we enter into this very holy season. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, now, before we do the next thing, I have to give a couple of instructions, so consider this your public service announcement. All right. Underneath your chair is a candle, and if you just want to pull that out, we're going to be lighting that in a minute, and there'll be some people who come down the ends of rows and, and light the candles on the end of rows, and your, your job is going to be to help someone else light their candle. We just ask that when, when they are lighting their candle, if your candle is lit, keep it straight. Let the people whose candle is not lit be the tipped one, all right? Because we don't want any wax to accidentally spill out and, and burn anybody while we're here. And then when we get to the end of this, believe it or not, you can blow out your candles, but uh, for those of you who would like to use snuffers, we actually have on the end of, of aisles some snuffers. And so you can do it, yes, you, you can do it that way. We're not technically the snuffer church, but we do provide snuffers for those who choose to use them. Would you all stand with me? And let's lift our voices as we let our light shine. 